Hello and welcome back to Little Loose Petcast. I am your host James, and today we are looking at the episode "Why Can't We Be Friends?" And it begins with a fly flying around LPS and Vinny chasing it, determined to catch it. Uh, he keeps missing it, and uh, Vinny continues to chase. And when it lands on Penny's butt, Vinny uses his tongue, but he misses the fly. And it lands there, and Penny's like, oh! And I think we can agree that's all a tad weird. So he continues to chase the fly, and he runs into Pepper and some of her prompts, which ends up with her chattering teeth getting caught in her mouth. Uh, Zoe, who's doing her hair, but when Vinny gets done like chasing her, chasing the fly in that area, Zoe's hair gets messed up again, and Minka was taking a nap uh, on her tire swing, but isn't because Vinny spun the tire swing. And then Sunil and Russell are testing uh, Sunil's card trick, but Russell keeps saying, that's not my card. And when Russell gets hit, he pinballs all around the room, and then Vinny crashes down and the fly lands on him. And he's about to get it, but everyone yells at him for all the ruckies he's caused, and the fly gets away. Vinny says he'll stop, and when the fly comes back, when he's about to charge, but he gets called out on it again, and he stops his charge and he retreats the walls to complain. A voice says he understands that he's been after that fly for two days. Then he turns, and in the shadows, there's a spider. However, the spider peers out from the shadows, and he looks a lot friendlier than... Uh, he was in the shadows, you know? And he introduces himself as a webber, a house spider. And he says that as a house spider, he's harmless unless you're a fly. Then he's like, I'm a gecko. And Weber's like, yeah, I, I know. So Vinny and Weber become fast friends and start exchanging fly stories. Weber has a story about when he was tracking a fly for a week, but then someone opened the door. And then Vinny tells him of the time he went to the dump, and Weber asks if there were a lot of flies there, and Vinny says yes. He does forget to mention the part where the flies saved him, but... I mean, for the purposes of this story, like, there, there are just a lot of flies there, and I guess, like, he and the flies have an understanding of, like, you know, I, I do this because I need to, to live, maybe? And the flies just kind of get it. And it's like, yo, we get it, but we also want to live, so we'll avoid you. So you have to be a good hunter. And it's like, yeah, okay. Except he doesn't because he's a pet and gets, like, the food he wants or needs, like, to live. So I guess this is out of sport or, I guess, habit or instinct, rather. So either way, uh, Weber asks why did he not stay at the dump, and many points to his friends and says, because there isn't here. And Weber realizes that they're good friends. And Vinny says, yeah, and then points to Sunil as his best friend. But Vinny remembers that Sunil is afraid of spiders and asks Weber to hide from him. Weber understands the whole arachnophobia thing and reiterates that he's not harmful unless he's a fly. Vinny, still kind of not getting it, says that Sunil's a mongoose, not a fly. And Weber's like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess spiders must also have an understanding about, like, people being afraid of them or not liking them. Like, personally... Like, I don't mind spiders too much. But I get it. And, 
Yeah, I guess so. I guess spiders in this universe would as well, because they appear to be somewhat sentient. And they're... Mm. I don't know if arachnids are bugs. I guess they're a bug. Hold on, now I'm, now I'm confused. So from what I've gathered, someone says that only insects are bugs, but that doesn't sound right, because, you know, like millipedes and centipedes, I would consider them bugs. I mean, I guess it's that whole, like, layman versus, like, technical thing. It's a, uh, it's an odd specification, but anyway, we we go to Blythe and Sue, uh, taking some of Blythe's old clothes to the thrift store, and Blythe thanking Sue for helping out, and they promise to get some frozen yogurt afterward, and head in. So uh, once they're in, Blythe says she gets so inspired here. And then they see the cashier, and Blythe says that she hasn't seen her before. She says that she's a new employee here, and introduces herself as Cora. Cora Dixon. So Blythe explains that she's donating some old clothes. Cora then pulls out some pet fashion, and then asks when Blythe was able to fit in that. And Blythe says that she forgot, but she brought in some old pet fashion that she designed as well. This piques Cora's curiosity, and the two start talking about fashion and the design they have on hand. So Cora asks if they're sequins. Uh, Blythe says that they're bull beads, I think. I think it's like something dog related. Bulldog came to mind. It's it's been a bit, and also I not that much into fashion. And so like they keep talking about like this stuff, and then Sue's stomach rumbles and says she was hungrier than she thought. And Blythe introduces Cora to Sue, and then like Cora says hi, and they keep talking about fashion. And Sue says that she's just gonna go get a table and reserve it for her. And Blythe says that that's good and keeps going. Sue is visibly upset and walks out the door and runs into Young Me who is walking Buttercream. So Young Me asks Sue uh, like what she's doing here and Sue explains what just happened with Blythe and Cora and the whole fashion thing. So they peer in and they're still talking and Sue and Young Me agree to go get the Froyo themselves. So all of the pets minus Sunil are huddled around and Sunil approaches them and asks them what's going on and they say nothing. So Sunil makes his way to Vinny who he knows will never lie to him. And Vinny appears to have something in his mouth and uh, Sunil asks for the truth. Vinny sweats which again he shouldn't be able to do. And uh, shakes his head, and Sunil is like, okay, I'm off. So then Vinny spits Weber out, and they both agree never to do that again, because that was terrible. So the pets are concerned about Sunil, but Russell thinks he bought it. So they ask Weber to finish his story about a crow, and they all listen on. Wow, like, these animals really sort of have a chill understanding of the circle of life. But what isn't chill is Sunil, who sees them meeting again and asks him to himself, do they think I'm a fool? What would Vinny lie to me about? Vinny, even. Sunil deduces that they're planning a surprise for him. So Blythe is showing off some more pet fashion to Cora, and they're talking more, and then they get to the end and have a laugh at the goofy pic that uh, she has at the end. 
this uh, pet album she has. So Cora asks what Blythe is going to do next, and Blythe is confused. Cora suggests doing some people styles, and Blythe is hesitant. Cora encourages her and says that people are like animals and stuff like that. And this gets Blythe going. Blythe agrees to try it out, and Cora helps her pick out stuff from the thrift store to help out. So they have a montage of grabbing stuff and goofing off in the store. So Blythe heads out with all of the stuff and bumps into Sue, who's coming back from the Froyo place. Blythe apologizes and says she didn't see her, but then when they see that it's Sue and Young Me, Sue asks what she's doing with all of this, and Young Me says, Is that the whole store? Blythe explains that Cora inspired her to design for people. Sue and Young Me say that they've told her to do that for a while. Uh, Blythe says that she knows, but she thought they were just being nice. But Cora isn't just being nice, and she thinks she's going to go for it a little bit. So, I just want to point out quick. Blythe was already designing stuff for humans. The, the whole thing with her designing for pets just came from an effort to save the less pet shop. And... I guess she wasn't doing human fashion professionally, like she's doing pet fashion professionally, but it's like like she knows how to design for humans. Uh uh oh and another thing. Um, I just thought of this now. But back in the thrift store, uh, they pull out one of Penny Ling's old uh, things. Probably from the first episode, actually. Yeah, if I, if I got that right, it's from the first episode. And uh, Blythe says that she outgrew it. So this may be something that they brush up against in a future episode. Like a future episode, like a, way, a ways down a bit still. I just, I just want to, like, put that in here now. Just to, just to make everything, you know, square. So... As I was saying, Sue says that she and Young Me are going to play tennis and asks if Blythe wants to come along. Blythe says that she has so much going on in her head that she has to strike while the inspiration is hot. And then Cora comes out and gives Blythe a few more things. Young Me asks if that's Blythe's new BFF. And Sue says that we've been demoted to just being friends. So Sunil walks in from the store into the play area. I, I don't even know why I need to say anything at this point about that. And sees a wall and wonders what all of that's about. And from behind the wall, we hear the questions. Do we have the supplies? Sunil interprets that as party supplies. Uh... Yeah, we have enough stuff. And Sunil interprets that as, like, something for a surprise. And then we hear, do we have the room? And Sunil interprets that as having enough room to accommodate all of the guests, as there are going to be many. And Sunil walks away and ponders why they are putting this much effort in for a surprise birthday when his birthday isn't even for another few months. So behind the wall, Russell confirms that they have enough room thanks to his measurements. And it is revealed that they are making a spider habitat for Weber. Weber thanks them and hopes word doesn't get out or else all of the spiders might come around. And he hopes that that isn't the case 
as you couldn't imagine hiding that many spiders from Sunil. That, and Blythe doesn't want to deal with that many animals again, presumably. From the case of, like, uh, tongue-tied. So, at school, Blythe and Cora are texting. Well, Blythe is texting... Well, no, Blythe and Cora are texting, but they're not texting from a few feet away. And Blythe is amused by all of the hilarious lolcats that uh, Cora finds. So he wants to make a plan to go to the movies Friday and then the mall Saturday, and Blythe nods her head. And young me thinks to make a day of it and go to the theater at the mall and then hang out. And that there's a new donut stand she wants to try. So, okay... I know New York is big, and even a quarter of New York is fairly sizable with, like, a bunch of, like, movie theaters, I would imagine. But how close is the mall and this other movie theater where, like, the mall also has a movie theater and they can get to it? fairly easily I would imagine I don't know like Blythe has a scooter and there is buses and I assume the subway system is still there this is why we need a map people <laughs> this is why we need a map <laughs> an actual map <laughs> like a google map of downtown city so, whatever. Blythe is still not paying attention to young me and Sue. And uh, they're getting annoyed by this. And they talk about how they're being bucked by Blythe. And how, like, they tried calling and texting, but you were too busy chatting it up with Cora to, you know, talk. And then Blythe shows them another lol cat, and it looks like Grumpy Cat, rest in peace. And h however, Young Me and Sue get mad and walk away, and Blythe says, I thought it was funny. And Sunil is hiding in excitement and deduces that if it takes everyone to m make this, his surprise is going to be big. Russell says that they're almost done, so they should break. So they all do, and they all leave the play area. Mrs. Twombly really does not care where they go. So anyway, Sunil then thinks to sneak a peek at his surprise. So meanwhile, Blythe is in her room working on something and wants to share it with someone. Or two people. So she instinctively calls Sue and young me. And Blythe wants to share her new designs, but they passively, aggressively... Do you know what? You know what I mean there. Ask if she wants to share it with them instead of Cora. Blythe is like, of course, and then asks why they are whispering. They explain that they're in the library where Blythe agreed to meet them, and Blythe realizes she forgot. She explains that on her way home she ran into Cora, who gave her some ideas. They're like, why don't you just call her then, and then hang up. Blythe is like, what have I done? So Sunil is about to see what his present is, and goes in. He sees the habitat, and is confused. He gets more confused at the running water and the singing, and he pulls back the shower curtain and sees Weber, and they both scream. And the rest of the pets come in and see this, and Sunil runs into the dumbwaiter, screaming all the way. Weber says that that was the most awkward introductions he's ever had. So Blythe is moping when she hears Sunil's cries. He appears out of the dumbwaiter and yells the situation, and he also comments on his peach scented body wash as Weber was taking a shower in case that wasn't clear. So Blythe asks Sunil to calm down. Sunil does but then asks if Blythe isn't harboring any spiders in here 
Flight says, let's just say no. <laughs> okay, so then Blythe says that despite how spiders look, they just mind their own business. So Neil still thinks they're scary, and Blythe asks if the other pets like him so much that they built him a place to live, then how bad could he be? Sunil so reiterates his fear, and Blythe says that they should just go meet him together. And Sunil's so like, okay, wait, what? And then they go down, and then they see the habitat, and Blythe is impressed. Russell says that everyone pinched in, and Minka asks what they think. Sunil so gets aggressive with his answer when he asks, like, can he escape? And they're like, yeah, he's free to come and go whenever he wants. Then I don't like it. And Blythe is like, Sunil. And then Sunil's like, you know, he's just saying what I'm saying. So, <laughs> anyway. Oh, dear. So Blythe goes to meet Weber and asks him his name. Vinny tells her that it is Weber, and she finds it clever. Vinny doesn't get it, and Blythe tries to explain it, but fails. So Neil then tries, like he he's a bit more clear, but it's still not effective and Vinny doesn't get it. Blythe wants to talk to Weber and Weber is surprised that she can talk to animals. Weber and Sunil start talking and uh, they ask each other if they're gonna scream again. Weber explains that he's not much of a screamer. It's just that when you pulled back the curtain I was startled. Sunil apologizes, saying that he shouldn't have barged in on him like that. Sunil does mention the fact that he appreciates his peach-scented body wash. And Weber says that it's actually apricot, and Sunil is amazed. Weber says that he finds peach-scented to be too strong. So then they start discussing arachnophobia, and Sunil plays it off as like, yeah, you know, something like Weber says, it's probably something to do with our eight-leggedness or hairiness, and Sunil's like, yeah, something like that. And he does acknowledge that it's rational, like all fears, and Weber reveals that he has a fear of ghost cows. He explains that he's afraid of being in a field in the middle of the night and then a herd of ghost cows come over. Sunil says that that trumps his fear of spiders and now he has a ghost cow phobia. And after all of that, they become friends. And then Blythe says, I wish I could solve my problems like you guys just did. And the pets ask what's wrong. Blythe explains that she found a new friend and that she realizes she hasn't been paying as much attention to her old friends because of her new friend. And her new friend is into fashion so much as she is, and she doesn't know what to do. So the pets all have ideas, but then Weber raises his hand, and Blythe calls on him. Weber says, pardon me for getting into a situation I don't know much about, to which Finney says, not a problem. I do that all the time. Weber continues his point, saying, I just think your friends need to get to know each other, old and new. Blythe thinks it's a great idea and heads out to do that. And the pets congratulate Weber for his advice. Sunil so then wants to know what his surprise is, and everyone is confused. He asks Vinny, and then Vinny stammers until uh, he comes up with the idea that his surprise is to make him not so afraid of spiders anymore. And Sunil's like, okay. So Blythe meets with Sue and Young Me in front of the Froyo place, and they awkwardly say hi to each other. Blythe thanks them for eventually receiving her calls and texts and apologizes for her behavior recently. Cora then pops out of the thrift shop and Blythe introduces her. Cora says that Blythe keeps talking about you two and Young Me and Sue are surprised. Blythe says that you're all my best friends and she's sorry about neglecting everyone, even though it was an accident. Sue and Young Mi then apologize for how they acted as well, and that they should have been more understanding of Blythe and her love of fashion. Blythe, Sue, and Young Mi make up, and then Cora goes, Yay, friends! So then 
Blythe pulls out of her bag and tosses out some hats that she made. They are animal-inspired people hats, and they look great, and they all agree on it, and they have a group hug. And at the pet shop, everyone is sleeping, and then Vinny wakes up because he gets Weber's name, finally. <laughs> and that ends the episode. Now... I love this episode. I love it. I find that it's one of the best episodes of the season. Like, that's that. That's why I didn't go on too many tangents. Too many tangents. Too many ta But there's something I do want to talk about. It could have been so much better if it did a few things. And this is not a knock at the episode itself. It's a knock on how the series was handled as a whole. And because of that, I'm going to spoil that a few things that I'm about to describe are things that do not happen in the show. And I think they should have should have happened but they don't. So if you want to be surprised by the show or you're watching with someone, you know, and this is your companion to the show, uh, I guess you can just stop because I'm going to say stuff that will not happen in the show. At least to the best of my knowledge. It has been like... Like, it's been like a little under two years since I've started this. Which means it's been that long and longer since I've seen some of these episodes. Especially the later episodes. But here we go. One, Weber should have become a recurring character that appears every so often, kind of like Buttercream. And he's written well enough to become a semi-member of the group. He fits in. It, it just makes sense to do this. But no, Weber is a character of the day. Except for this one other time he appears. But that one other time is it, I believe. Like, we we should be like Weber should be a recurring character. So two Blythe should have revealed to Sue that she can talk to animals. Or young me could have done it when she was bitter with Blythe and her attitude. Or build up to a reveal later. Like I have a specific episode in mind for when that could have happened, but I feel like this lays the groundwork of it, like, really well. Like, like Sue is losing faith in Blythe's and hers friendship. And, like, despite that kind of happening in, uh, and, um, uh, Mean Isn't Your Color? No, is that Mean Isn't Your Color? Um, oh, no, it was a uh, penny for your laughs. Like, they were still just becoming friends then. They, in, in this episode, they've been friends for at least a year, maybe two years. We need a timeline. I keep saying we need a map and we need a timeline, but both of these things are true. So... Like, there, there's all of that. Like, like we kind of get something with Sunil getting over a fear of spiders, but he's still afraid of a lot of other stuff, so... Whatever. But, like, it's something. And Korra actually does become a recurring character. But I don't think... uh, Like, it shakes things up in a meaningful way. Like... 
this episode had the perfect opportunity to do that with like building up to that like revealing to sue or having weber be a recurring character or whatnot like like the themes of the episode are there and it it could have been something more than it is more than the sum of its parts it just doesn't go far enough and maybe this show doesn't want to do that except it already has kind of with the secret recipe and sure that was a mid-season finale according to air date order and if that's what they wanted to go with and have all of the big stuff be in the mid-season or the season finale or the season premiere even then whatever I don't know but like stuff happens and like you know you can you can do more than just like be showy when you want to you can like you can build your world really well here and you're just not taking the time to do so and uh I don't think that makes a good show or a show with the lasting impact. Like, I'm not going to tell you how to write your show. You could write it like this and it could still be good. Heck, like, this show is written like this show is and I'm doing a podcast on it. But I really think that like doing something like this shaking up the formula every once in a while would keep people interested and it would keep your show on the air instead of like canceling it because there's not enough interest like that that is something that happened to the show it it got like canceled by the network like before it could do some of this stuff. And maybe they weren't intending on doing some of the other stuff that I think they should do, which I'll probably get into in later episodes, especially when we hit that last season. But at the same time, I really think that, like, it could have done more. Like, this is sort of in tandem with MLP, and it was between seasons four and five of MLP, and MLP had a shakeup in it. Like, at the end of season three, they made Twilight a princess, and, like, in the season four finale. Like, I guess that was still finale stuff, but there was stuff, like in there that like had a meaningful thing in that like you you don't have to be as grand as MLP with your world building but you could still have something that's like as powerful without it being like you know world ending and you can do that by doing this stuff some other stuff whatever uh it, like like i said this episode is good and i love it to death it could have been so much more though it could have been a second secret recipe it could have been that could have been something else could have been more and it, it wasn't, but I still like it. And that is where we are ending today's episode of the Littlest Petcast. Be sure 
to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcasts, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else our SS feeds go when they're planning a party for a mongoose. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode Pet Sounds. I shall see you then. Right, I never got around to it, but uh, I guess you can add spiders to the list of bugs that can talk. So that currently makes mosquitoes and um, spiders. I think there's one more that can talk. Is it, yeah, bees. Mosquitoes, spiders, and bees who can talk in English, at least, or in a distinct or distinguishable way. And then flies and butterflies as ones that don't. So, there we go.